Thank welcome. you. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. That was Lori, my assistant. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> And um, we'll just wait a couple of minutes before we get started. Um, if you come to my Zooms frequently, you might notice I'm in a new setting. <laughs> I'm at my daughter's in Portland, Oregon this week. So I'm, I'm streaming from there. So it's great to see everybody. Let me put it on gallery, yay. Hi everyone, I'm just going to wait one more minute and then we'll get started. I am going to talk about the paper year first. I just have a short uh, PowerPoint presentation and then we will get to making the spinning flower card. Um, <laughs> Debbie's asking me, this is a joke. Are you doing art projects together or watching TV? Well, we're doing both because I <laughs> I shared in my last uh, paper year meeting <laughs> that I wanted to bring some things, art things to do with her. And we are, we did, we did a collage last night yeah. and I brought jelly printing stuff as well. So we'll see what else we get up to. Um, okay. Donna mentioned that she can't hear you. Um, we did, okay. Helen and I did talk about that her voice is a little bit quieter today than usual we're not sure why just turn your volume up yeah um, turn your volume up uh, dory says she can hear fine i'll try to talk a little bit louder ramsey says she can hear robin can hear great thank you okay well welcome everybody it's great to see all of you and i'm looking forward to um, seeing your spinning flower cards at the end of this uh, workshop um, I'm going to share my screen first and just talk a little bit about the paper year, which is my membership program, which is now open for enrollment through July 10th. Um, that'll just be 10 or 15 minutes. And then you can type a question into the chat at any time. Um, yeah, just keep yourself muted. You're all doing that. Thank you. And then, um, and then we'll get on to making the project. So I will share my screen. Back to the top. Okay, so here we go. And um, yeah, I'm going to talk a little louder in case you're having any problems hearing me. I'm 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 in a new setting today. I'm visiting my daughter in Portland, Oregon. Okay, so for those who don't know me, I run a paper making studio high up in Colorado's Rocky Mountains in this old school house in Red Cliff, where I create artist books and installations. Okay, now it's not advancing. Uh, did you move it out of the option that you had noted before? But uh, it, it, uh, it advanced once. I know. Um, dang it. Now I can't even see my cursor. Sorry, guys. Uh, to stop the share and start it again. Yeah. Uh, you want me to stop the share? No, you're doing it. Okay, hang on. Uh, you can stop the share. Yeah, do that. Yeah. Sorry, okay. guys. Um, I still see it. Oh, there we go. We're not seeing it yet. Okay, hang on. Now I got to get back to my Zoom screen. Okay, got to love Zoom. Hopefully this works. Okay, now when I go to play slideshow, it is in full screen. Okay. No, it won't advance. Darn it. Um, you're, are you doing it with your keyboard or with your mouse? I only have my keyboard. Okay. And that, I tested it. It worked fine. I know. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to stop share again. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, okay, so I'm going to try one more time and then I won't bore you guys with this anymore. So I'm going to try um, just showing you my window, this window, mm -hmm. and see if I can get it to advance from the side here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so I'm sorry, you just have to look at it with just, you don't have to read along with me. I'll read to you <laughs> my comments. Um, so this is my newest installation. I wanted to tell you a little bit about, it's at Anything Right Farms. It's a giant, which is a library in Denver. It's a giant paper lantern that has the phrase collaged onto it. You may think your light is small, but it can make a huge difference in other people's lives. And viewers that, who visit the library are invited to walk around the lantern, read that phrase and reflect on how they can be the light, both as an individual and as well in, as in their communities. And the bookshelves around the lantern are filled with books about light. So you can sit there and, and sort of think about yourself as the light. And if you're in the Denver area, there will be a culminating event for this uh, project on July 30th. I also teach workshops and I'm starting to teach, <clears throat> excuse me, in person, <clears throat> excuse me, all kinds of problems today. In, <clears throat> in person workshops again. And uh, here's what's coming up. I have a retreat in my studio in August. I have two spots still open. I'm uh, teaching in Italy at a wonderful place called ICA Arts. And that's in, I forgot to put the date, September, mid-September to the beginning of October. And then I'm also doing paper making masterclasses in my studio. I just held the first one uh, a week ago and I'll be doing another one at least in the summer of 2023. If you're just joining me, I had some technical difficulties. So you're having to view the presentation from my uh, notes view. Um, I also write how-to books and I have a couple on paper making and several that just involve using paper in a variety of ways. And The Art of Paper Craft is my recent book, which just came out in February. And I love designing with paper and sharing ideas for tra transforming it from two into three dimensions. So the paper year is a membership program. I started in January of 2021 to inspire you with a new monthly technique and project. In addition to gaining skills for working with paper, you'll become part of our paper loving community. I'm so inspired by what happens in the online classroom and I know you will be too. Here are some of the highlights from 2021. We did a little paper weaving onto a sculpted form to kick the year off. We made paper cloth pocket books in February. And in March, we had a guest artist, Susan Joy Cher, who showed us how to create a matchbook structure. We have quarterly guest artists that I invite who design the project for one month of each quarter. And then in April, we explored collapsible collage sculptures. And May, a book form I call the crisscross accordion, which can be transformed into sculptural objects as well. And then our guest artist that quarter was Alyssa Campbell, who introduced us to paper electronics. And then quarter three, we created these envelope photo albums, wallpaper pocketbooks, with guest artist Paula Krieg and then um, patchwork wall hangings. We explore different ways to work with paper as well as different types of paper throughout the year. And then the last quarter of 2021, um, we got involved with paper engineering with Sean Sheehy, our guest artist, paper cutting and book arts. And so I said earlier, but the paper year is now open for registration through July 10th. And there are two ways that you can join me. All of this is outlined on the registration page. And by the way, uh, Lori's dropped a block of links into the chat where you can find that link as well as many of the other things I'm talking about. And there's a video about the paper year there as well. Uh, but in brief, 
PDF subscribers receive just that, a PDF with instructions for the monthly project. That's a $10 a month program. And then for $30 a month, you become an all-in subscriber. You'll get the PDF as well as video instructions, plus a couple of monthly Zoom gatherings, which I'll talk about in a minute. So here's an example of what a monthly PDF looks like. This is just the first three pages of one. And then this gives you an idea of the look and length of the monthly video. Um, you'll also receive access to a wonderful online community where we share our work. You can ask questions and we provide supportive feedback and share tips and tricks. And that's part of the all in plan. I wanted to say one more thing. All in plan members meet on Zoom twice a month. We'll have a special guest at our monthly Zoom meeting, which will either be a guest artist, a paper supplier, and our next paper supplier will be Zoe Gehring from Cave Paper, or a surface design workshop instructor. We also have a two hour monthly open studio session where you can carve out time to complete the monthly project. And we spend time together getting to know each other and sharing paper tips and tricks. And here's just a quick view of what we've explored this year so far. This uh, fun little star box with guest artist Isabel Uria. We did slice forms in February. And um, here are a couple more slice form examples from participants. And then we did stitching on paper in March. Our guest artist in April was Lisa Merkin and we made these fluted paper vessels. In May, we explored bendable paper, which involves embedding string or wire in paper to make it malleable in a different way. And then right now in June, we're exploring this tiny house project, which was a design by Deborah Glantz and a project in my book, The Art of Papercraft. Um, I mentioned this briefly, but in 2022, I added um, a quarterly Zoom live online workshop. So actually the projects in the paper year are pre-recorded and you can just go in at any time and watch the videos. But these surface design workshops are live online. And um, so far all, I've had guest artists um, teach those. And Susan Joy Cher did rubbings. Uh, Allie Manning just came on and we did jelly printing. And then coming up, we have natural dyeing with Radha Pandey and mark making with Andy Trams. So once each quarter we do this and it's a fun way to add color and design to, to ready-made papers. And here's a sneak peek of the graphic for the next quarter, um, wh which begins uh, next Tuesday, July 5th. The monthly projects deliver the first Monday of the month, because, but because it's July 4th, it'll be Tuesday this month, this coming month. And we'll be creating a pop-up pocket theater in July with guest artist Beatrice Caron. In August, we'll explore a book pendant. And in September, we'll be making stitched paper vessels. And as I mentioned before, the surface design workshop will be natural dyeing on paper. So as I said, registration is open now through July 10th. This link is in the chat. Um, I'll also send you this recording with, the, with all of the links as well. So you don't really have to worry about that now. And that's the paper year in a nutshell. Um, please visit that link to read more and register. And I hope you'll join us as we transform paper in a variety of ways. Helen, there's a question about can we join month by month dependent on topic? Yeah, just um, let's go back to my face. Okay. Um, you can do that on your own. That's not really how it's set up to do. You would just join and then quit. And then you can join and quit again. So um, that's possible through my payment system that you can join and then cancel and you'll have access for the whole month you know, as long as you've paid. 
and then you can join again. I only, um, you know, I'm only saying what, which project is coming up three months ahead. So it's by quarter. So you, you don't really have a view of too, too far ahead. Um, and then uh, do we, if you join now, do you have access to past months? Yes, yes. Yeah, if you join now, you have access to everything in the growing paper library uh, since uh, the beginning, January of 2021. So there's quite a large library in there. Yes. Robin says she's in. Yay. Yay. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I think I think that's it so far. All right. So let's um, uh, spotlight my hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. All right. So um, this is a fairly simple project. Um, but let me tell you a few things about it and then we'll get to work. So I wanted to show you this paper called rock paper and Lori has a sample of something she'll show in a moment too. She works with it quite a bit. It is this wonderful material. It's uh, made by a company called rock paper and um, it comes in really fun colors. Technically it is not paper. It's uh, made from calcium carbonate, which is, I think why they call it rock and, um, and a binder, which is proprietary. So I don't know what the binder is, but it's usually white on one side, colored on the other. These are thicker sheets. So this is almost a cover weight. And then the thinner sheets are the same color throughout. But another fun thing is that there are these interesting striations on, on many of the sheets. So like this green just has this beautiful, it's like a wash. Um, it's very versatile. Uh, you can work on top of it with many mediums. It folds really well. It cuts really well. Someone asked me recently if you can tear it. It does not tear well, um, but you can do all kinds of things with it. And if you know me, you know, I, you know, I love translucency. So it's some of the sheets are translucent. And look at this one has these interesting speckles on it. Uh, who knows, maybe that was a mistake, but it looks great. So it's a fun company. I interviewed um, the founder, her mother's a scientist and developed the technique. And then she's an artist and she saw what her mom was doing and thought, ooh, I think I could sell this. So I encourage you to look at uh, their papers and they, they have lots of things that are $10 and less like little scrap packs and then packs of six by six inch squares. Um, it's waterproof too, that's another characteristic. So just really an amazing material. Okay, Lori, show us what you made with rock paper. Okay. Um, and Lori's my helper, by the way, say thank you to her. <laughs> we all say thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna, I have to. And okay. Fulvia is asking me the name of the company again, that's rock paper, R-O-C-K. And it's, there's a link in the chat. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, I do a lot of layered paper cuts with mine, meaning I take, I, um, I cut the first, the coral colored uh, design, and then I cut that out. And then I lay the next color in and cut out whatever I don't want to be that second color and keep moving. And you can kind of see the translucence. If I flip it around, you can really see how the last color was just white. So you can, you can see the translucence. Um, if I hold it up in front of an actual window, it, it will alter you know, the way that some of these colors look, but um, I love it. Uh, Helen, you mentioned that on the thinner sheets that they're they're the same color on both sides. I find not always. They're, okay. they're often a different color on the other side, which can be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's it. Cool, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Helen's hands. 
That's interesting. I don't, none of the ones I have are a different color on the other side. Really? So it's maybe really batch dependent. Yeah. Oh. I don't hmm. know. Okay. Um, so what you need, um, hopefully you all got the supply list. A couple of people just yesterday and today said they had trouble and it seemed like it was loading slow. I don't know. Anyways, here's what we need. So you need a decorative paper that you're going to make your flowers out of. And this is why this is called a spinning card because you can spin the petals. And um, uh, something to mount your flower on. So just a card. I have a folding card. This is four and a, it's a half, a half of an eight and a half by 11 folded in half. So four and a quarters by five and a half. And um, this one's a little bit larger. This is a square. You can see something I did on the back. I'll try to remember to mention that again. And then this is just a flat piece of paper. So it doesn't have to be a card. It can just be a flat sheet. Um, and then depending on the size of where you're putting this, we are going to spend the first moment just sketching out a petal design. So I have four different ones I'll just set here for you to look at. I actually took a walk last night. Portland is filled with flowers and was looking at different flower petals. I took some pictures too, but you know, I saw a dogwood tree and I noticed that the dogwood petal or the dogwood flower is about four. So I have five here, but this is very similar to dogwood. So it's fun to look and, and see. Um, don't go out right now and do that though. <laughs> um, I have some eyelets. I'll talk about them more um, when we get to that. Um, and I put the link to where I got these eyelet outlet. They come in all different fun shapes and colors. Um, if you don't have an eyelet, I'll show you how you can do it with this needle and thread. It's, it's a simple. And then um, you need scissors for cutting, unless you prefer an X-Acto knife and some kind of punch for punching a hole in the center through all of your petals. Um, it could be an awl, this is a Japanese screw punch um, so that we can thread the eyelet or the string through. Okay, so I think I said to have just a piece of cardstock for making your petals and we need a pencil. So just go ahead and um, sketch out a petal design. The only thing you need to keep in, in mind is what you're going to put your flower on. So if it's a small card, like I'm going to put mine on this small four and a quarter inch. So I don't want my petal to be too large. I'll mount it in the center. So that's your guide. It needs to be smaller than halfway across. So, uh, for, in my case, about two inches. The center will overlap a little bit, but I'm gonna make mine just two inches long, which is pretty short. I'm gonna use this one. So does anyone already have your, you can hold it up if you have your template. I just wanna get an idea whether people, just some people work ahead. Okay. I just see a couple. Oh, and a lot of people aren't on video, which is fine. So, um, yeah, so once you have your template, then you're going to cut out however many petals you want. I would say a minimum of six or seven. Um, and let me show you this one again, which I did a double layer. So the rock paper is very thin. That's another reason it works well. Um, so this will depend on your thickness, how thick, how bulky you want your piece to be, if it matters, but it will matter if you're using an eyelet. Um, although my eyelets have quite a long shank. I think that's called a shank. I could, I could have up to an eighth inch thick of material and I don't have anywhere near that with, um, right here. I have two, four, six. I have 20 petals on this one. So I have a smaller one in a larger one. And then, you know, it's kind of fun. I'm just gonna keep talking while you're working. You can rearrange where the petals fall. Um, 
you know, I have them in the center of the darker petals here, but I could have them uh, go in between. So I find it fun to play around with these afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to just draw my petals. Um, now, if I'm, I'm using a heavier paper, I'll have to draw and cut them out one at a time. But when I made those other ones, I do think I'm gonna do that this time. But when I made the other ones, I just folded my paper. So if you're interested, just take a look up. Um, I cut a strip. This is why I said three inch strips would be fine. You can cut a strip of paper. I'm just looking to see if I have a strip that's a color that's gonna go with that yellow so I can do this. I'm not liking my colors. Um, okay, I'm gonna change to gray as my background and I put a yellow flower on it. And now I can accordion fold this and cut all of the petals at once, much easier. Lori, is this what you meant by the color difference? It's a little bit different. No, um, my, like, sheets, my sheets have a distinct, like okay. there might different be like color. orange on the top and, and clearly like a brown on the back. Okay. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, I don't know, maybe, um, Maybe that's specified on the sales page. Frankly, I found it hard to know what to order yeah. because there's so many different little packs. <laughs> so that might be something to look for. And all I've ordered so far are assorted packs. Right. Um, okay. So that's what I feel like I've ordered too. So. Yeah, but there are different assortments. There's thicknesses. There's, there's right. different colorways. Um, so... Not all of them, but I've definitely seen a lot that have a distinct color on the different color on the back side. Yeah. Um, at the end of this session, uh, we're going to do some screenshots where we all hold up our beautiful flowers. And I know we're going to have like a an amazing bouquet of all different papers and shapes. So I've just drawn my template onto the top of my accordion, you see I have eight sections here and I'll be able to cut all of those at one time. And eight is pushing it a bit, cutting eight all at once, because this is kind of thick, but this paper cuts really well. Um, so I've got pencil mark on my top layer. I'm just going to erase that. Um, if you if you have your hands free and want to type into the chat, I would love to know what type of flower you're envisioning that you're making or you are making? That's a subjective question, I guess. Um, mine's going to be like a daisy. Um, one other thing I didn't really mention, but you know, you're gonna have to poke a hole in the center. So if you'll notice on my templates, I've got a little flat edge it could be a point too, but you're just going to have to have enough width down there to punch a hole. Um, Kelly said she liked the dogwood flower. I have to say, I, you know, I haven't looked at flowers quite as close. Um, so doing something like this makes you observe. 
Ooh, the elusive white rose, Janet. That sounds wonderful. Um, so I noticed, you know, on the dogwood, the coloring, and there were two dogwood trees, and one looked um, really vibrant and healthy, and the other one was kind of, I don't know if it was lacking in water or older or what. It just didn't, the leaves, so it was white flowers with the pink around the edges. And the second tree had um, much more pink and it just looked healthier. Susie's making a dahlia. Can't wait to see it. All right, we have, um, you know, again, there's just not a lot to show you. So I'm going to um, feel free to type any questions about the paper year or the project into the chat or paper in general. Um, cause I'm going to give you five or 10 minutes to, well, I'll check in, but just to, to, to get your petals, um, maybe you can type into the chat, how many petals, like, are you halfway one third away? Cause I don't know how many petals you're planning. How do you feel you're doing You're a quarter of the way? Are you done? Okay, okay, a couple people are done. So I need to hear from some of you who aren't done so that I don't just rush on. Okay, a lot of people done, good. Did you use the accordion method for cutting your petals? Yes, good. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you um, a couple more minutes, like three. Okay, Susie's making a double layer. She's halfway done. Um, and you know, uh, the first time I did something like this was not even a flower. It was just circles, you know, all the ways that you can Oh, it's really hard to describe. But if you join circles in the center, kind of like I'm joining the flowers, um, you can get all these interesting patterns um, when you make an array of them, depending on how closely or far apart. I'm gonna do a little sketch. So like a circle, you get all these overlaps, right? Maybe you've done, um, exercises like this. So I'm not drawing circles very well, but you get these interesting overlaps that actually look like flowers. And so all I'm saying here is that you don't have to make a flower. You could do rectangles or triangles and maybe it becomes a flower anyways. Um, you don't have to necessarily start with a petal in other words. So it's really pretty versatile. Could have an ellipse or something more recognizable. I like to use the house shape for things. And then you could have the, the center here. You know, where you connect them is another thing. You could start here, here, any of these corners, even an edge, and see what happens. Different things happen. Um, we did in one of my online classes, flexible book structures we did something called a strip book. So this is similar to that as well, where you take strips of paper, so long strips, but then you can shape those strips. So lots of variations. Helen, somebody asked about what you can use to make marks on the rock paper. And I put into the chat that I, I have seen, I haven't tried it yet, but I have seen people using watercolor and colored pencil on rock paper. And even though the rock paper is waterproof, it just means that the water won't go into the paper. It will stay on top of the paper. So I've seen people do really beautiful um, paintings and using it as a background. So you've got this, this, especially when it's that's dry rated, it's 
you've got this great background that you're just yeah. creating a scene on. And so it's really cool. Right. Absolutely. And um, yeah, I don't have anything to add. I'm sure there are many examples on the rock paper website, but one thing I discovered recently was um, when you make a mark, like I'm making a mark. Oh no, it's not going to work. Okay. I'm going to draw with a pencil. And then on the back, well, if you push, it embosses really well. That's, that's what I'm remembering. Someone has done embossing. I can see my little mark of the pencil on the back. And then I had a sheet, I think it was two-sided. I'm just gonna try it with this, where I crumpled it. Um, yeah, it's different on different papers. It made really pronounced white lines where the crumples were. This is not quite as pronounced. Um, it's a little more on this side, but on the other sheet I did it on, it was on one side only. The other side, you only saw the crumple, but on the other side, you saw the lines. It was really cool. So, and again, you can buy these packs of many sheets so you can feel like, oh, I can try crumpling this up because I have so many others. <laughs> but I happen to like crumple papers for projects. So I'm keeping that. All right. So, I think we're good. So I'm going to move on. Um, and I'm going to stack all of my petals. Um, I recommend stacking them in the order you want them in so that you don't have to rearrange them again when you put them on the card. So just go ahead and like mine, mine's a little yellower on one side and a little orange. I'm going to alternate as I stack them. Yellow, orange, yellow, orange. Hopefully I can see, it's, it's very subtle. How many petals did people cut out? Let me type it in the chat. Nine, four, Kelly's doing the dogwood. I look forward to seeing yours, I think. Okay, now I'm going to make sure they're all stacked nice and neat. Now we will put a hole into the material, the card or whatever we are attaching this to. And that you need to um, probably measure and mark. I have a pretty good eye. I'm gonna put mine in the center just a little up toward the top, just not exactly centered. I'm making a mark there. In my camera, it looks way off. So we have two overachievers who are doing 16 and 12. <laughs> awesome. Ooh, five for a cherry blossom, yay. Okay, Denise, it's fine to just watch. Okay, I don't wanna to go too high. Look, I went a little too high. I need to just put this in the center because of the size. I'm gonna almost go out to the edge too. So check that kind of thing. Um, you know what, I'm gonna change. I have them all here and I know I can cut them all. I'm gonna just make just a little uh, change to the end of my point. Oh, I was just trying to get it a little better. I don't want it straight. I wanted it kind of curved. Okay, that's all right. So, because I noticed it was probably gonna pop out over the edge. Um, the one thing I forgot was a cutting mat because um, uh, I'm in Portland, I'm traveling. So I don't want to poke a hole into this table. So hopefully this will work. This is two layers. I have a Japanese screw punch. If you don't know the Japanese screw punch, it's a very cool tool. Uh, maybe Laura, you could just put Talus in the chat. I didn't have that on my list. These are available from Talus. You can find something like this at, at uh, Michael's. Uh, Martha Stewart makes a line and on Amazon as well. But I bought a cheap one like cheap meaning about $15 and it fell apart. This one is more like $75 and 
but you will use it um, if you get one. So it's got, uh, uh, comes with about seven different size hole punches. This is the size I'm using now. It's probably, oh, it's a little smaller than an eighth, maybe. Uh, I don't know. It's not a 16th, 330 seconds, something like that. And so, yeah, you can just take the bits out, replace them. And then you can put a hole anywhere in a sheet of paper, oops, which is cool too. You know, the normal hand hole punches only have so much reach. So I'm using this. If you don't have any hole punch, like a normal hole punch would fit, but um, usually the holes are bigger. They do small stuff, spell, sell smaller ones. Um, uh, you guys type into the chat if you have any other things you're using. I'd love to know now. But if you if you don't have well, if you don't have an eyelet and a screw punch, you can use a needle and thread. So I'm going to show that as well. But um, I'm just going to center my screw punch as best I can. I like to punch through all the layers. I have to do it several punches. I'll show you that right now. But you could just punch one and use that as a guide and then individually punch the other ones. That's a little more accurate because as I'm punching through several layers, this is going to slip a little bit. Um, but this paper is, again, the paper I'm using is very uh, good with this kind of thing. So can't really hold this. You're just gonna have to imagine what I'm doing. So I'm holding it, I'm straight up. You'll see, I'll, I'll lift it up. I'm going to punch. So this has this action that it moves down as I punch. Okay, I didn't even get any out. I'm gonna punch again. I think I've got a couple in my bit here. And then I'm just gonna keep going until I see the manila, which is of course the same color. Yeah, so I'm all the way through. So there I've got my holes. And now this is why I stack them in order so that I don't have to reorganize them now because the holes are really um, perfect. Um, I did not bring an awl, but an awl is a great piercing tool. So I only have my needle here, which is pretty dull, frankly. But if I'm just gonna use a needle and thread, I would just, pierce the same way and pierce through all the layers. Um, the all has a nice handle on it for helping. I would have to pierce, I'm just gonna pierce one, um, one at a time just with this needle. This is like a cross stitch needle, so it's not pointy at all, it's very dull. But there I've got my hole with the needle. And then I will take my card. Which card am I using? Gray. And of course, I want to make sure that I have that opened out so I don't poke a hole through the back cover of the card. And do that erasing a little better. And then I'm going to pierce through my hole. So there's the hole. And then I will take all of my petals. And so the eyelets, let me just talk a moment about these. These are from eyeletoutlet.com. And they're really inexpensive. Um, you get packs of, I haven't ordered in a while. I can't remember how many are in a pack. 25 maybe of specialty designs like the leaf. Here's a bird. There we go. A bird, a tree, but all kinds. They cater to holidays, you know, fireworks, 4th of July, flowers. And then you can buy 
packs of probably a hundred or more of different round ones. Just uh, these have like a metallic or um, browns, all different colors. So it's really fun to look at that website. And so I'll just take all of my petals and thread my eyelet through. So I've got them all on my eyelet and then I'll go through the, the card as well. And I'll flip that over. It's not an eyelet, I'm saying the total wrong word. It's a brad, sorry. These are brads, but Eyelet Outlet sells brads. <laughs> and you know, we use brads um, on those manila envelopes that fold over. And, you know, they were an office product for a long time. And now they are a scrapbooking item. And then you can fan out your petals. to create your flower. Um, so if I were just, if I were doing a needle and thread, I would poke a hole in my, actually this rock paper pokes really well. I'd poke a hole in my card and I would take my petals, which I don't really have any, but let me see if I can. Do something real quick. Um, the only thing with the stitching is you can only have one string going through. You can't like uh, have two holes uh, you need it to spin, so it can just be one, which is fine. Um, Janet's using the end of a compass to pierce. Very creative. Yay. And you have the, ink, the part you can hold on to to give you some leverage. Perfect. Okay, so I've pierced my hole. I'm gonna take my thread. Um, this is cross stitch thread. I don't know, looks the same as embroidery. One, two, three, it's six strands, yeah. I couldn't get the six to thread onto the needle, even though it has a really long eye. So I'm gonna um, hopefully get three, oh man. Maybe cross stitch, it seems like it's synthetic or something. It's not behaving like I'm used to. Those ends are just going every which way. Yeah, I'm only gonna be able to do one so I can get it on here before we end. <laughs> All right, one is really skimpy though. I would have a nice beefy thread like not sewing thread, embroidery thread. I'm gonna tie a knot in one end. And because my thread is so thin, I'm gonna triple knot. Um, you could be creative with what you do at the end. Um, also on your flower, you know, if you have an eyelet, that's a fun thing in the center. But on this one, I just cut a piece of paper into a fun shape. And then I think I alluded to this earlier, but I put, I punched a circle and put that on the back just to make it look more intentional. And it gives it a little more st structure holding it together. So there are lots of things you could do in the center. Um, but so I've got my, my knot and then I'll just stick my needle through 
and pull it onto the back. So I've got a little end, which I think is kind of fun, but obviously you could trim that or make it longer, accentuate it. You could even put more pieces of thread through um, to have, you know, like um, sunflowers. I don't, what's that center called? Is that the stamen or something else? You know, some of them, I have these little things in the center. Um, and so I'm gonna show, Susie's asking, how do I tie off? So here's what I do. I'm gonna get a knot really close to that hole. Um, can you guys see that okay? Mm -hmm. I'm working kind of white on white, but okay. So I'm going to make a loop. So I'm gonna bring my thread around, just like I'm tying a knot. So there's my big giant loop. And this is going to pull tight to a knot. I make sh I'm making sure it's tight on the back. The knot is right up to my pedal. And now I'm going to stick my needle right at the hole. I'm gonna actually push it right on the hole. It's going to stay there as I pull my thread tight. And my knot is going to end up right there, which it did. Now I'm gonna do that again. So I'm just making a loop because I want a triple knot. I'm gonna do three. I'm going to set my needle right, right there at the hole. And I'm going to pull that tight and that'll join that other knot. Now that's a double. And just because my thread is so thin, if I had been able to use the three ply, I would have just had to tie one. So I'm simulating three. Um, and I'll pull that tight again. So I've got a nice knot. Now I never cut right at the knot. I always leave a little tail, like a half inch, uh, because it could come undone. But you could cover that. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. It'll still spin. The thread is in there. So you could cover that and uh, put something on there. Now I only cut two petals, I think. Ooh, they're almost stuck together. Oh no, I cut four. You know, think of other things that spin, the handles on a clock. Um, so, you know, you could make this into something more conceptual as well. So there it is with string. Helen, that was amazing. I've been doing embroidery for 50 years and no one has ever mentioned that trick before. Ah, so I, you, don't, you don't watch the paper, your videos, because I'm sure well, I clearly I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, I don't remember where I learned that. My mother taught me how to sew. I'm going to have to ask yeah. her, now. does she tie a knot like that? Because either she taught me or I don't think I came up with it myself. Yeah. Does anybody I, else, has anybody else seen that way? Uh, thank you for coming, Rachel. Yep. Okay. So yeah, I think it's a common thing. Um, yeah. So does anybody have any last questions? Oh, we have to, are, are people done? We have to do a little screen share. I'll come okay. back on. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, Sorry. Susan, that's beautiful with the pink and the or, uh, yellow. And I love the dark center. Katie, awesome. Um, I'm going to. You know, we have time. We have five minutes. So I'd love to spotlight. I'll do the screenshots if you do the spotlighting, uh, Lori. Oh, okay. So um, if you don't mind coming on, just your your face and your, your flower. We'll do that. And then we'll do a uh, screenshot at the end. Um, should I just say okay, Katie? Katie looks like she wants to. Okay. Okay. Then um, I'm, so I'm going to put spotlight like Katie. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Katie Azevedo. There. Now Katie is spotlit. Okay. So this is for an altered book that I'm working on. And so I really like that it's three. And this is the shape of the book. So I was able to use both sides um, of the paper. 
Oh, cool. Hold it still so I can take a picture real quick. Oh, and I love how you mix different papers. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, how should we queue up, Lori? What's going to make it easiest for you? Um, well, um, if you want to, uh, I think Barb, Barb he, okay. Helander, he, Helander wants to show. So I'm going to spotlight Barb. Okay, there. Oh, fantastic. Did you get her? She, yeah. You're no. muted, Barb. Oh, Barbara. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what I've got here is uh, some paste paper and some Japanese feather paper. And then I did just a little punch of a, a little bright paper for the, uh, the center of the flower. So I kind of thought yeah. it was like a, like a pansy. It's beautiful. Yeah, I love how they overlap. I'm going to take a picture. Hang on. Okay. And that's a punch that you used in the center? Yeah, for the center, it's yeah. a punch. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I, okay, so um, C.E. Carlson has unmuted herself, so I'm assuming. Uh, oh, let's see. Sorry, C.E. doesn't have her video on. Linda Tanaka has unmuted. Whoop. So I'm assuming she wants to be. There we go. Hi. It's hey, double-sided paper. Um, and that's a just on construction type paper. It does spin, and then I started off with this one, and yeah, uh, deep sixed it. Anyway, that's my card's going to be. Oh, that's so. Cool. Hold it up just a hair. I'm going to get a good picture. And what about that center flower? Did you cut those petals too? No, uh, it came from Michael's. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice. That's a nice combination beautiful thank Thanks. you okay anita mester is unmuted so i'm assuming she wants to share there we are oh i just leaves. i just added some leaves to it so. wonderful not sure if it spins real good but anyway uh, thank you fun lesson thank helen you. yeah thank you thanks for coming um did you get a picture helen yeah okay um, the next one I'm going to do is Janet Toto, and I just want to say, C.E. Carlson, you're unmuted, so, but your camera's off, so I can't spotlight you. Um, Janet Toto. Hi, Ooh. everybody. Um, I swore I was just going to look and take it all in, and then I had to get the scissors, and I had <laughs> to get the paper. So I just took what I had around, so that's just regular plain old kind of copy paper, um, and I just did, um, I had my in, ink tank um, pencil sitting here. So oh, I just yeah. followed them up a little bit, but I think it has potential for, you know, to really think it through and get these petals going, but it's what a wonderful lesson. Thank you so much. Put it in front of the camera a little better so I can get a nice shot. Yeah, I love how you did the coloring and then the background paper, super fun. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Nancy Elliott is the next one on my list. Hi, this is great. So I just grabbed a piece of scrapbook paper that already had flowers on it. So I just kind of went with the shape of those and uh, added a little punch in, out in the middle and a second row of petals. And... Yeah, hold it still for a second. Oh, wait, uh, I lost my, okay, uh, there we go. Beautiful. Thank you. That was fun. Great yeah. lesson. Thank you. Um, Susie Tuckman. I made a I made a dahlia. I started playing oh. around coloring in the, in the middles. They're very irregular. Their petals are very irregular. So I started cutting into them to make them different shapes. Yeah, that's like in nature. Nature is not regular. Well, it surprisingly is, but if you, I think if you look closely, it is. But thank you. Okay. Um, I think the last one might be Donna Heron. Okay. There we go. Oh, there you go. We're not you hearing you, Donna. I don't think your audio is on. Uh, now you're muted. You're muted. Um, Well, we can see it. Can yeah. you hear me? Oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah. 
Yep. Okay, let's see. Here we go. It's oh, just card, it's just cardstock. Yeah, it looks great. It's so cute. I know what yeah. a cool, what a cool card. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Hey, well, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. So thank you so much for coming. Thanks for participating. And if you feel like posting on Instagram, please tag me, uh, Helen Hebert. I'd love to see your flowers on Instagram too. And again, um, I'll send the recording to everyone who registered um, later today or tomorrow. And all the links will be in there too. And I hope you'll check out the paper year if you're not already a member. Thanks so much.